Good evening, Reynoldsburg. We're two for two. This thing actually worked uh, with the new Zoom program. So I'm gonna go ahead and admit some people in here. Welcome committee members. How's everyone doing this evening? Good, how are you? Doing well. You are live on Facebook already. We had to do some uh, technical changes. Uh, apparently Zoom doesn't like it when I admit people into a meeting before I publish. So now I have to publish and then admit. So that's gonna be always an interesting thing. So, uh, so far, if I have to kind of look away a little bit, I'll be admitting people as they come in. Uh, but I do welcome you to the uh, May 12th uh, Community Commission meeting. Um, basically, the agenda is a very light one today. Uh, we have uh, some updated information on a few things, um, some requests uh, for me to go out to arts and beautification as well as welcome and diversity, uh, some updated information for the Military Recognition Committee, and uh, some information for the Traffic and Transportation Committee uh, with CODA. Uh, we're going to have uh, Director Bauscher is going to be on a little bit later tonight to talk about uh, some of the things going on there. Uh, but in the meantime, I will go ahead and get this one started as it is now seven o'clock and we're welcoming people in. Just kind of go over a couple of things from new business. If you uh, were not able to watch Monday's council meeting, we did pass the Adopt a Road program uh, that Councilman Stacy Baker has put forth. Um, I'd love it if the Arts and Beautification uh, and Welcoming and Diversity Committee meeting uh, is able to sponsor a road at some point in time. That would be awesome. Um, but we'll get more details on that as we kind of go through. And is there a document that you can forward to us? Yep. And we're now that the legislation has passed, we're in what they call basically a 30 day wait period to get all of those final details taken up. And I'll get that to you as soon as possible. Uh, Cause I know a couple of groups have expressed interest in that one. Um, I, I believe there's actually a litter pickup this weekend on the Lancaster. I think they're meeting at Memorial Plaza on the corner of Lancaster and Maine. Uh, so if anybody wants to go out there and uh, do a little beautification uh, on Lancaster, you're more than welcome to join us out there. What's the day and time on that, please? Uh, I will have to get that to you. I don't know where. I know that's something outside. I know Councilman Lou Salvati is working on that one, along with a couple of residents on Lancaster. So I'll get that to you. Uh, we also have the June 5th uh, through the 12th Litter Challenge that will begin uh, in just a few short weeks. Uh, basically, you'll have the opportunity to take a picture of yourself with uh, any litter that you pick up, and then you'll be entered uh, for some great prizes. We had uh, a number of uh, local businesses contribute to that, including Starstruck, Raider Nutrition, and a few other ones uh, for some of the litter cleanup pro uh, programs of uh, June 6th through 12th. Uh, with that, that's the only new business that I have specifically for right now. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to um, Ruben, and uh, then we'll go ahead and get started on any additional comments. And we do have another guest here. Jen Sheeks is joining us. Thanks. I haven't seen you since two days ago. Right. Uh, I have a great opportunity. She's very interested in talking about uh, the art aspect of everything uh, that we're trying to accomplish. So with that, I'll leave it to Ruben. Well, uh, we we don't have uh, much updating. Uh, you know, we we had the uh, the cleanup that was in the Kroger area a couple of weeks ago, and um, so that was great that uh, so many people came out and and helped uh, Councilman Packerell for that. And um, other than that, that's that's what we've got for the moment. Um, I know a couple of things that have come up uh, specifically about uh, the arts and beautification um, is. Uh, uh, volunteer uh, hopes uh, for any of you to help join us at uh, our tomato festival. Uh, we are, I'd say, way beyond the planning stages of that. We uh, we're just waiting on some final confirmation to secure our opening acts. We have our main acts that we all are aware of, but now we're looking to secure some of our opening acts. Um, so hopefully we'll have that in the not too distant future. A lot of local bands uh, from central Ohio, maybe even some from Reynoldsburg uh, that might be popping in on that one. In addition to some of the other musical acts that'll be performing on our secondary stage at different points in time. Uh, and uh, as well as some of our arts and other performing arts. Uh, I believe we have a couple of dance groups that will be coming in uh, as well. I did want to make a note that uh, we will have a dance group that will be performing at our Juneteenth celebration in Huber Park. Um, on June 19th. Um, so kind of keep an eye out for that. That information will be out uh, probably by early next week. Um, again, there's a lot of things going on this summer. And so we can only, we only want to put out a little bit at a time because every time that we, you don't want to overload the information on everything. 
Um, so with that, I'm going to actually kind of talk a little bit uh, about uh, my meeting with Jen Sheik. She came in earlier this week, and uh, amongst a couple of topics, we talked about um, how we can improve community arts within Reynoldsburg uh, and what's that like. Um, so a lot of the things that she was talking about are a lot of things that this group had talked about, but I think you were coming at it basically from two different angles, but all ultimately wanting to meet up at the same point is how can we as a community encourage uh, local art in its many forms to kind of thrive and survive here in Reynoldsburg, uh, whether it be music or actual, you know, sculptured art, or in this case uh, that we talked a, a lot more about was performance art. So I'll kind of go ahead and let Jen uh, kind of talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that she's talked about with some other community members in another group that's kind of working in the same, in the same pattern as what we're trying to do here. Thank you. Um, so we have a group together. I don't know if some of you saw on Facebook, I, I put out just some feelers on what interest in the community might be like for a community theater, um, or ultimately what would hopefully become a cultural arts center, um, a place as um, what the mayor said that not just performance art, but musicians, um, everything from you know, painters, sculpture, everything, any, anything that encompasses anything creative that the people of Reynoldsburg would have a home for it there. Um, and that we could start to create a, we could start to give our city, city that little bit of identity um, in terms of arts and culture. So as we were talking through it, I met with him to see what the city was working on, um, to get his thoughts on, are we duplicating efforts? And it sounds like we might be. I do have a small group of people together um, that are very motivated um, and experienced to kind of push this project along, but I'd like to pause and see if it might be better if we maybe coordinated our efforts or maybe redirected them into what you're already working on, or what are some, what are some ways that we can really help ramp up the visibility because um, I, I think that while it might be known what we're doing in some circles, we're, we're looking to amplify that and, and amplify it and be a lot more inclusive of people who might not be on social media, who might not be aware of some of the, some of the opportunities that are happening um, at that grassroots level, especially. So we started out talking about community theater, uh, but really with the ultimate goal of expanding it um, even to things like poetry slams, um, one person musical acts, um, skit comedies, the, the little three set or three minute plays, maybe perhaps at the tomato festival, but just getting the community of artists, uh, having them have a place to gather and um, having a method to, uh, to really express who they are. So that was, that was what we met about. So I'd like your thoughts on that. And what, what do you what do you think that what are you working on now that we can help with or should we continue on this path or what, what is what is your feedback well I, I think it sounds awesome um, so, so tell me I, I guess I missed I guess the very first part um, so these are Reynoldsburg residents that are assembling this project or, 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 or group of projects right yeah. awesome so I guess what I would ask is that um, if you wanted to join in, uh, we periodically have um, meetings in between these these main, you know, commission meetings, and that would I you know be great if you guys could join in on that meeting and you know throw some ideas that way. Um, so if you know we can uh, you know get some emails and, and stuff you know offline here, and uh, we can include you on on those on those future meetings um, because I I think that. Um, everybody in this in this committee would be uh, really excited about those types of activities and and expanding and and you know trying trying new ideas so um, I, I think that all of what you're saying is in line with uh, with the, the desires of of our committee so is there any kind of strategic plan or business plan or marketing plan or any anything in, in, in that direction that exists already or is there we're pretty, we're pretty action oriented, this group. So that, that's kind of what we're looking for is how do we, how do we put things in the spotlight and make things happen? If there's already something in the works, that's great, but, or is there room to do, to add in those executable items? I think every, there's, there's always room. There's all, you know, say there's absolutely room for that. Um, the more the merrier. And, um, you know, this, this, I guess, group and this whole commission concept um, only began, <clears throat> excuse me, um, 
you know, mid last year. So, you know, it's, it's, it's still sort of a young, uh, young group, uh, as far as, uh, you know, business plans and things like that. No, it's, it's, uh, it's just been more of sort of, uh, community volunteerism. And, uh, we, we, I guess started with, uh, the, the beautification part of this. And, um, certainly we are tasked with, uh, with the arts aspect as well. And that's, that's, you know, one of my passions. And so I'm, you know, and I, and, and other members of the committee, I, I think are also very passionate about this. So, um, you know, people like you and, and your team who are psyched to get involved and, and, uh, you know, make things action oriented, um, I think we're all for, and, um, and like I said, if, if we can get you to, you know, sort of circle into our, our meetings and, and see, you know, what we can do to, to move some of your ideas forward, I think that'd be, that'd be fantastic. I think what was interesting about between the two of you is you're each wanting the same thing, but you're using different methods. So this commission is kind of like circled around um, existing or relatively new uh, Reynoldsburg uh, city events, whether it's the tomato festival is obviously one major push that we've had uh, to include like an art walk, uh, the painting and canvas night, um, as well as the, mu the musical and the performing arts aspect of it, uh, the music and the cul-de-sacs and bringing in different types of diversity. So when they have those musical performances throughout the city, you're having, you know, in different areas, but also different styles of music. So I think it's, that's where that has focused on, uh, whereas your group looks like, you, you know, you, that I don't want to call it a brick and mortar, but you're looking for an actual performing arts center at some point in time where you have a place where people can perform, not just at a tomato festival, but you know, throughout the year, regardless of everything. Um, you know, it's going to be a few years before we get that outdoor amphitheater uh, out at Civic Park, but I think that there are other options that we can deal with. Um, I know I had mentioned to you um, the partnership that is kind of growing between Eastland Fairfield Career Center and Reynoldsburg City Schools, specifically with the Livingston campus and ultimately at the Encore campus um, for the facilities um, that, I mean, there's ready-made stage and, you know, uh, all of the stuff that you would need for a lot of that there. Um, so I did reach out to the superintendent. We briefly talked about it. Uh, this is not the time of the year to talk to a superintendent about anything. Oh. Between graduations, state testing, and uh, apparently now everything is going to get thrown for a loop again with the governor's uh, mention that all of the restrictions will be lifted. And I'm sure he's going to love this right before graduation starts. So all of those ticket limitations that were set in stone wow. now, who knows what's going to happen with those. Listen, resilience um, is the name of the game. <laughs> so, yes, and... no, absolutely. It's, it's just, just when you think things have kind of gone in a certain direction, we, we figured the earliest we had heard that there was going to be some things probably in late June, uh, before the 4th of July. But uh, now this, uh, this takes a, a little bit out of that. But maybe at one point in time, we can have a representative from the school district uh, join you on your, on, on your committee meeting uh, just okay. to have those conversations. Uh, because I do think a partnership would be worthwhile. And if we're looking for space, especially right now, um, and, you know, that is, you know, a partnership that we can have with the schools that is relatively low cost or no cost, uh, but still having the access. I think that that's probably a number one priority. And then depending on how things go from there, then it can become its own, wherever it is at this group and, or Jen, your group, or however it all works out, how you want to direct it. Uh, if you want to have something where it's a nonprofit aspect of it, where a specific plan, where you have dedicated facilities and all of that. Uh, but we, we have to start somewhere. And I think that this would probably be a good place. And we did bring in an advisor from um, who is actually part of Eastland Fairfield Career Center, um, but also um, has close ties to Reynoldsburg City Schools, used to teach there actually. So um, for advice and you know what would you do? And we have all this, um, we have people with production experience, with writing experience, with set building experience. Um, I'm kind of the vision person with none of that experience, but I can see uh, I can see um, gaps in what we need. So all of us together uh, have, have a pretty good framework, but I, I do, I wanna share with the group that part of what we were looking at doing and the reason why that brick and mortar was kind of important to us is because it is it's definitely not a for-profit venture. We're looking at this as certainly very, very much a community venture, a place for uh, the student body to go, but also for the adults to come. Think about what Short North Stage does. I, I love the productions they put on it. And, and I, I think it's, um, that's an underserved, we are an underserved community. We're starved when it comes to really um, kind of pushing the envelope type of arts. But at the same time, we've got a community of families. So we need to offer things for children, for student body, all of that. Um, but ultimately the city of Reynoldsburg having a brand, one of the things I talked to the mayor about, if I said, what is Asheville um, known for? Asheville, is it South Carolina, North Carolina? 
known for. I mean, everybody pretty much knows that's an arts community. Austin, Texas, um, pick a city in New Mexico. I mean, you, you can have these cities that have these, these, this branding that's, that's really closely tied to their culture. And I, and I think that we have a real opportunity to bolster our visibility there. And that's why the brick and mortar side of it, I, I thought was pretty important to get to, to ultimately have a retail venture um, born in the Berg or I don't know, something like that, that really helps to give us an identity that differentiates us from every place else around us because I think we do have a lot to offer, um, but we just kind of need to push up that, that art side of it. So to that end, I would like to know, um, last question and then I'm done, I promise. The structure of the committee, where, um, where, where myself or some of the people that I'm working with might be able to fit in there. We're looking again, collaboration, not to take over, but to work side by side, take a back seat where it's necessary, absolutely. Um, what, can you tell me how some of that works? Logistics. So we've we've been a lot in the in the sort of dreaming phase uh, at this point and have put a uh, I guess a, a number of things like a wish list essentially together that we've then you know mentioned at this meeting to then filter to the uh, to the council and and have them you know grab the ideas that that they are you know hopefully excited about and and push those forward um, so you know. And any additional human power would be would be awesome with this, you know. So you know, we we, we don't see it as a takeover. We see it as a collaboration. We see it as as more minds meeting together. So um, I I think what you're what you're saying is awesome. And and um, you know, there the the thing with our committee is there are a lot of different interests uh, within the committee, and um, where you know my interests might you know reside more with music and performance art. Um, some of the other committee members are more. Know, beautification and cleanup driven. So, um, you know, it, it might, you know, it might be helpful to have you know, some more of that, that that can help kind of push some of this forward. So, uh, no, we absolutely, we, we welcome you and welcome your, your folks and um, see how we can actually, um, you know, collaborate to make some of these things a reality. That's awesome. All right, great. Well, listen, I put my contact information in the chat. So anybody who's out there, I don't mind sharing it. Um, is there for next steps. So thank you so much. Thank you. I'll uh, I'll send you an email to follow up, and then we can uh, figure out when our next uh, micro committee meeting will be, and and get you involved with that. Sorry. Right. Thank you. As we kind of wrap up for this particular one, um, I do want to make a mention that uh, with depending on what happens with the governor's announcement uh, right now. Um, once those uh, emergency uh, things um, are expired in June. Um, that will end uh, the viability of a public function like this to be held uh, virtually. So um, at that point, uh, these meetings would then have to revert to council. Um, I didn't get a lot of feedback from many of the groups. I think this was one of the few that actually said something back and preferred to keep virtual for, uh, for one more month. Um, but I think that at this point, um, unless something changes or that that extension is uh, continued for virtual meetings, uh, the next meeting will probably occur here at City Hall, the main, the main official one. Uh, your individual committee meetings are a different story. You guys can do those however you need to. Uh, but the next one will occur uh, at City Hall, and we'll have it, uh, again, open to the public, but as well as broadcast on Facebook and all of that, hopefully with working microphones at all stations this time. Apparently, that was an issue at Council on Monday. Uh, but we'll, we'll take care of that part of it. Um, I still think it to respect everyone's time, I still think it would be best to have two committees meet on one particular night and then the other two committees meet on a different night instead of having all four committees like we have here. I know here it's easy. We have you know 20 minutes, we get the information, we move fast, which I'm a big believer in. Uh, but for something when we're actually in person and all that to have a little bit more time so we don't feel as time crunched but still respectful of everybody else. Because I know there's a few people on here that are here for the transportation committee already that really won't start until about eight o'clock. So. Uh, there's a couple of things out there for that. Any questions, comments, closing thoughts? Uh, re people ready to volunteer for the Tomato Festival or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Just, just throw that out there. Yeah. All right, we'll have, uh, we are gonna have a sign-up sheet uh, that we will be distributing and talking about uh, for people that want to. And again, for those people that just happen to randomly show up at the Tomato Festival and say, hey, we want, we want to help. Uh, there's going to be plenty of activities out there as well for everybody. So uh, if there are uh, no other questions, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, adjourn if, this if, part of it. Oh. Real quick, if you could, um, I guess, send me a list of, you know, sort of art-centric or 
stage, like if you need stage hands or anything like that, you know, maybe you, if you can send me sort of a wish list of positions and I can forward that out to the committee and uh, see if they, or, you know, their, their connections are interested in jumping onto those. And maybe if there's time slots or, um, you know, any of that type of stuff, whatever you have, um, I can at least forward that out to the group. Absolutely. Be happy to do that. And I'll also get the information for the litter cleanup for those of you that are on for the beautification side of things. Uh, we are going to have our community cleanup day in October, which is uh, a long way away, but mostly because we couldn't get uh, a vendor to bring a shredded truck uh, due to COVID uh, for the June meeting. But we will have one in October, uh, as well as a um, hazardous materials. So we'll do uh, get all that information out as we get a little bit closer. I'm trying to think, I know there was something else that I was just going to say about community cleanup, um, but I'm sure I will see most of you in the not too distant future anyway. All right, with that, we will go ahead and uh, close down our arts and beautification meeting. Thank you everyone to joining us. Thanks, Jen, for joining us on this one. We'll get everyone Thank you. connected. Nice meet, everyone. Um, Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. And now we'll move on to our welcome and diversity committee. Uh, welcoming and diversity committee will begin. Uh, we have a couple of quick announcements for those of you that are just joining us. Um, if you did not hear, uh, apparently there is now a lottery system uh, for those that got the vaccine because uh, all of those rules have been relaxed by the governor uh, starting in uh, early June. So uh, first things first, uh, I want to make sure that everybody's aware that um, with the ex expiration of those orders, um, it, it is very possible and probably likely that the virtual meetings uh, for these commissions will no longer be allowed, uh, that it will expire with those. So these meetings will then revert back to uh, live and in-person here at City Hall. Um, I do suggest still, I uh, didn't get a lot of feedback from too many groups last time, but I do think that it would still be best to have two groups meet on one night and two groups meet on another night. Maybe the, the Wednesdays following council meetings just to be on the same side. Uh, that would be a possibility with it, uh, but I do uh, request some of your feedback on that. Um, so just let us know uh, in the next couple of days uh, how that goes. I'll have Jessica send out a reminder email just to get some information from each of the committees. Uh, new business before I turn it over to Tatiana. Um, we are weeks away from uh, some of our big events. And I know one of the things that has been talked about consistently is some sort of a welcome booth, some sort of thing to welcome people coming into some of our activities. Um, you know, obviously a big part of that is hoping to have plenty of volunteers to staff those things, uh, specifically at our major events, uh, specifically our tomato festival, um, the artist and makers market, uh, that it's actually going to be on June 5th. I think that'll be the first big one. Uh, and then there's a number of other events that kind of go through. Um, so what I would like to do is, uh, in addition to asking for volunteers at every part of these meetings, uh, for all of our events, uh, send out a list of some of our events that we would love to have the welcome booth there. Um, obviously, we'll provide the table and chairs and things like that, uh, but people to actually man it to be able to kind of maybe potentially hand out some information about the city, um, you know, some of the, let's say, perhaps have a section where you have the uh, Experience Reynoldsburg Magazine or you have the Heirloom that has some information about Parks and Rec and things of that nature uh, at some of those events, maybe at like some of our bigger uh, typical um, farmer's markets. Uh, apparently the first one is always kind of tame and not everybody comes to that first one. Uh, apparently, apparently it's a tradition that it rains the first uh, farmer's market. I'm not sure how that works, but it does. Uh, but the second farmer's market is usually one of our more well-attended ones, followed by the maker, artist and maker's market, uh, maybe potentially having something out at the uh, tomato fest or at the uh, 4th of July uh, fireworks celebration at Civic Park. That might be something as well. Um, any number of different opportunities, but we would love to have a part of that in there. In the meantime, I'm going to turn it over to Tatiana and she's gonna hopefully uh, take it away and kind of go over any potential uh, updates and topics that you guys would like to cover. So with that, Tatiana. Hi, good evening everyone. And my apologies for not um, being on camera. I am at my son's soccer game. So my apologies if you hear lots of screaming and cheering. We have a lot of passionate parents here cheering for their kiddos. Um, in terms of our committee, uh, uh, one of the follow-ups is uh, uh, we are still talking about having the flags for uh, the uh, immigrant month, which is June. Uh, and I just looked up some of the flags. If we uh, buy individual flags from all the countries that are represented in uh, our city, it could get a bit costly. 
uh, but there are sets of flags from around the world um, that are pretty cheap that we can buy, uh, but that does not guarantee that every flag, every country will be um, will be represented here. So that's something that we need to still discuss about. There is a flag that is a flag of all flags. And I thought about the idea of maybe hanging that flag up on the pole in front of uh, City Hall, if that is something that um, you may or could, would consider and our, our com committee would, would agree to. Uh, that's just another option. And then I would welcome any ideas from uh, the Arts and Beautification Committee, if they would have any ideas that uh, uh, we could implement for, for that. Um, also for the month of June, uh, we um, touched bases with uh, Councilwoman Lawson Rowe, and uh, she said that she would welcome us uh, help with the event. Uh, she mentioned something about maybe us having a booth there, and that's as far as I have heard uh, from her in, in terms of that event. So I'm gonna have to touch basis again with her to see if there's anything else that we can do for, for, for that event to help. Were you talking about Juneteenth? Yes. Okay, just making sure. So um, for those of you that uh, might've missed my 12 o'clock show today, which you should never, but I understand if you did, uh, we did discuss, uh, last year was the first year that Reynoldsburg actually celebrated Juneteenth, uh, and this year it's going to be the same thing. We're going to be doing it at Huber Park, and we're partnering with the African American, uh, African American Wellness Association. They're going to be doing some health screenings. There's going to be a 5K. There'll be a couple of food trucks with only healthy food. There you go, at that one event as well. Um, but there'll be some great things. There'll be some dancing and, and some spoken word poetry as well, uh, but that would be, uh, again, another one of those uh, new events that are that's coming to Reynoldsburg that uh, we'd love to have uh, participation in with that one. I will uh, reach out to Councilwoman Lawson Rowe uh, and just kind of make sure that uh, we have this, you know, we'll get the space and all of that in there. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, it sounds like fun, actually. So uh, yeah, we will have uh, probably our individual meeting and um, decide who can volunteer to man the booth if we end up having one which most likely will. Um, and I think that's probably it okay. for us. It's, uh, it's been a light month okay. in terms of our committee, yeah. Um, I would like to just mention a couple of things. Um, I, I've actually gotten um, still, even though it's been a little bit of time, I've still gotten a lot of really good feedback from um, National Women's History Month that we, uh, that we did. Um, and some of the commentary from that. So uh, as we move forward uh, and get to other months, um, I, any help from the committee that would be helpful, I would appreciate it as far as uh, you know, some of the, some of the uh, uh, conversations. I know this is uh, Asian, uh, Asian History Month right now, specific Asian American history. And so that would be something to be looking forward to. Um, I know it's not an easy task to kind of line up different groups to come in and speak as on that 12 o'clock show, but I, I definitely think it was something that a lot of people appreciated. Uh, as we kind of move forward. So uh, appreciate any support and help with that. Um, the flag of all flags, I think that's a good idea. I think it's probably the most cost effective uh, given uh, the number of uh, different communities that we have here in Reynoldsburg. Um, in all honesty, you know, here we are, we are, we are all united. We all want what is best for all things. So I think that that would be a good one. Um, I know it may be too early to ask, but I'm going to ask Les and Tatiana, I don't know if you've had any conversations about uh, the Macedonian Festival, if that is something that is potentially going to come back, or is that still kind of floating as in the not, we're not sure area? Um, I just spoke to someone just a few days ago about the Macedonian Festival, and uh, since we were still on restrictions, they were just not... Uh, confident how well that's going to turn out if we end up having it. But now that the, the restrictions are being lifted, this might be something that may be revisited. So I will have to uh, follow up with them and let you know. Okay. But for, for right now, well, as of last week, it wasn't happening. Okay. Just let us know. 
I try not yes. to. Please let me know if if you guys are going ahead with it. Um, my 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 uh, my office is ready to help you uh, completely as 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 much as you want to. Although uh, the promotion of it is should be starting now, but if it's not, it, it's okay. We'll, we'll we'll help you whatever you want. Yes, I will uh, definitely uh, call a few individuals and find out what's going on, and I will let you know. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Yeah, I, yeah. I do. Uh, Joe, um, I want to I wanna get something going about the um, new resident, the new resident uh, either uh, package or brochure or something to welcome new residents into the uh, into the community. Um, we need to have something ready. I mean, we need to have a, a packet ready. Yeah, uh, we, we're working on that. We're working on that uh, actually as you speak, Les. We're, we're working on it. It's going to take a little bit of time to get all the information together because we're kind of building it from scratch, but that's definitely something that we're working on. Okay, well, I want to be, I'd, I'd like to be included in that if, if you don't mind. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I'm sure we can have some uh, some different options for you. Okay. Anything else? I see Darren and John, anything you guys have any? Yeah, Mayor, uh, actually, if you don't mind me asking, um, how much uh, information would you have with regards to Jen Sheiks? I apologize, I, I was eavesdropping on the last meeting and I might be carrying a subject over from the last meeting to this meeting. Um, she was speaking about a brick and mortar. And when I, when I think of a brick and mortar for a specific arts only, versus, uh, and I don't want to step on the YMCA's toes here, but a community center, a community center in general, one that would have um, everywhere from a concession stand to maybe a gymnasium to a theater attached to it. I think that would be more cost efficient if we had an actual Reynoldsburg community center. Um, so my original question just being, uh, how much information do you have about brick and mortars and what what's in place, what's what's the plan as far as that was concerned? Would I speak to Jen about it or? Um... He would probably have a much better idea as far as the, the, the specific how far they've gotten through logistics. Um, I know that, you know, a lot of different communities have certain things. Most of them, um, the one that popped up to mind uh, that I talked with Jen about is if you're in Westerville, not too far off from the Otterbein campus, mm -hmm. uh, they have a park area that does have an outdoor amphitheater where they do some performance. Um, and I think that's one thing that she and I were talking about is somewhere something at least like that where you have an opportunity for performances there. I know they've done other things. Um, I can't remember the name of the park in Columbus, but they've done, you know, Shakespeare in the park uh, sure. and things that's like that. Schiller, Schiller Park. Schiller, Schiller Park. Park. Schiller Park. I, yeah, that's... German Village. Yeah. So I know that they've done things like that there before. And I know that's kind of the direction they wanted to go to. I think both groups were between the arts and beautification and her group. I think they both had very similar ideas about how to increase art, but different methods. Like I said, one was more going towards existing city events where Jen's group was looking for something a little bit more community-based as far as the rest of it. But no, I think even tapping into the YMCA as well as our school districts for the brick and mortar aspect would be there. Um, I don't think that there's going to be another opportunity for a specific community center outside of that, given you know, that our community center that we just built uh, the city helped build, I uh, was just finished about a year, uh, uh, just a little a year and a half ago. So I don't think that there's going to be too much of an appetite to add on to the, into that particular world. Um, but definitely, I think working with some partnerships and some sponsorships, and if it turns into, as she was talking about, potentially a, you know, for-profit business that would actually have some opportunities there, I think that definitely takes it out of the, out of the city's realm outside of a, you know, support and logistics aspect of things. Understood. Thank you. Joe, have you seen the, uh, did you, did you see the um, amphitheater in New Albany? No, I tend to not pay too much attention to New Albany because they have New Albany money and Reynoldsburg has Reynoldsburg money. And that's part of the reason why I try and keep things a little bit more uh, realistic in that they have beautiful facilities, beautiful schools, um, and all I've seen a number of things that they have there. Uh, but until we get some other things straight, I, I tend not to to dream too much about those types of things, but, but I get the, the general perception of what they have there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I think that we'd love to have a lot of different things that uh, are, are out there, but, uh, and we'll get there eventually, I'm sure. But I think okay. what we can do is find out, you know, take a little bit from New Albany, a little bit from Westerville, a little bit from Worthington and find what fits with what we, you know, we are able to do and what kind of partnerships we can build. But yeah, absolutely. Okay. 
uh, Mayor. So I, somehow I'm I'm late coming in. I was having a heck of a, I don't know what was going on. I couldn't get into the meeting anyway. So I missed the first ten minutes, but just wanted to plug the um, uh, Hamali cuisine. Uh, I've eaten there twice already, and so uh, we're, we're trying to get the word spread. I we were able to take five extra people with us one night, and uh, so they were very uh, appreciative of that. So uh, mm -hmm. just trying to keep continue the word spread of they you know there's still so much going on in the city i have i'm clueless about it. i think they said i did i hear them right that we have 10 um nepali or indian restaurants in town yes and so I, I that's pretty extraordinary anyway uh we've eaten at three of them and uh and the new one is is very nice so uh, they have their grand opening. Uh, actually, they're going to have their grand opening ceremony this Sunday from two to four. Uh, we'll have we are actually going to get that information out uh, tomorrow, uh, but they'll have their grand opening, and I'm sure uh, that uh, we just got kind of got notified of that today that they want to do something right there. Uh, but it's a it's a great facility. I've heard nothing but good things about it, and that's always good for review. So I appreciate that. All right. Any other questions, comments? Um, hey, Les, how did the uh, diversity showcase? I know that there were some technical issues with it, but uh, are we looking to kind of take a little bit of that from this past year and then move it in towards something for next year? Yeah, I, I think that what happened was that um, the schools didn't get enough support from from wherever, wherever they needed support from, including the kids. The kids were too busy and things didn't work out uh, as 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 they thought they, it would. So um, they did something online um, and I checked with them and I think they, I think they did okay, but it wasn't, it wasn't what we planned on. So it, it didn't work out the way we wanted it. Well, I think that uh, I, my understanding is that Reynoldsburg will be going back to five days a, a week next year. And then obviously some of the other restrictions as we've talked about are, are no longer right. going to be in place after the first week of June. So I think that right. uh, from, from that point of view, certain things will be uh, a lot. Uh, we had everything set up for them and uh, you know, it was all ready to go and everything, but they just, um, it, it just uh, logistically, it just, it just couldn't, they just couldn't do it. So. All right. Well, we're looking forward to bringing that part back. Um, Tatiana, I know you're, I hope somebody's scoring a goal out there. The game's going well with your son, um, but do you have any other comments, anything else as we kind of wrap up here? We won. No, no, no other comments though. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's why you probably, right, thank you. Mute. Probably that's why she pushed me because it was very excited and I, who knows what kind of language she's going to throw in her uh, joy of, of victory and all of that. So I appreciate that Tatiana. <laughs> All right, well, if there's nothing else, we've got about two minutes to go beforehand. If there's any random questions about anything else, I'm happy to fill some time, uh, answer any questions that you have. Hey. I'm really enjoying the why. I've, uh, since we got back from Florida, so I've been uh, able to schedule swimming. Now on the computer, your finger has to be on your click button because if you wait two seconds, you don't have a lane to swim in at the Y. So I'm getting really good at that. The nice thing about this, which I think maybe uh, we can advertise. So I can swim, leave the Y, get on my bike, get on the bike trail, bike for 20, 30 miles, come back, put on my running shoes, run the bike trail. It's a, we, we should put, we should invite outsiders to come to do their triathlon training right in downtown Reynoldsburg. It is a, it is a perfect triathlon training uh, location. So well, that's a whole talking. other topic, whole other topic, but I thought I'd throw it in there. No, you must have been talking to our city attorney, Chris Shook, who is actually in the process of training for a triathlon. Um, oh, so I, I better yes. get together with him and we can train together. Yep, he's actually, um, I think that they've hit a couple 26 mile uh, bike rides and they're gearing up for a 40 mile bike ride this weekend. And then he does the swim um, over at the Y, the, the same thing. Um, I do know that the Y is going to be opening and expanding their hours uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, and bringing some additional programs as more and more people come back. Uh, but I'll tell you what, every time I look over at the parking lot every day, it's a, it's a lot more full. It's, it reminds me of what it was in January, February last year, uh, where it was very consistently used. And I know I certainly need to get out there, uh, but I keep scheduling meetings for seven o'clock at night. So there's always a, a difference in that. But I'll definitely get out there uh, as we get a little bit nicer weather. 
All right, well, I'll go ahead. For those of you that are uh, remaining, you're more than welcome to stand. For those of you that are done on uh, for the uh, Welcome and Diversity Committee, uh, that is fine. I hope to hear from you again uh, as we get set up for our next meeting. And again, it will be here at City Hall and we'll get all that information to you as far as dates, times and things like that. But it'll probably be the Wednesdays uh, just after the uh, council meetings and we'll figure out which two groups go on the first uh, after the first one and which two go after the second one. Looking forward to it. Have a nice evening. Hey. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. We'll all. all right, Stephen, it looks like it's just you and me for the military uh, commission meeting. This is not when do we usually time. start about eight? Uh, nope, seven forty is when we're starting this time. We have the oh, agenda. good. Um, yep, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up uh, as we get started here. Um, I think Stephen, you are on here, uh, so I'll just kind of go over it with you. Uh, with the governor's declaration that uh, all of these health orders are going to be rescinded uh, the June 2nd, uh, we'll probably be coming back live in City Hall for the community commission meetings. Um, you heard me probably say just a few minutes ago, we'll figure out, you know, which we, you know, which Wednesday uh, this particular group will meet on, uh, but we'll be kind of going back to that. Uh, as it is 740, we'll go through a couple of quick things. There's really no new business, but we do have uh, some updates as far as our um, ceremony. I believe, uh, according to the last best information that I have, uh, the ceremony on Memorial Day will begin at 12 p.m. And we will have uh, some opening words from myself. Uh, we'll have the posting of the colors from the Columbus South High School Army Junior ROTC. Uh, we'll have Regina White uh, uh, be, uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, apparently sing the national anthem, followed by an invocation from the American Legion uh, Assistant Chaplain Mary Austin. We'll have a poem uh, from Sergeant Jeffrey Buchanan Springer from the United States Army retired. We'll have some uh, special remarks from George Muse, uh, Musi, the commander uh, for the American Legion post 798. Uh, we'll have Suzette Heller, adjutant of the American Legion Department of Ohio will be giving our keynote address. Uh, Robert Jennings, a US Army veteran will be our guest speaker. Um, and then we'll have some closing remarks as well as a benediction and a retiring of the colors. Uh, we will be broadcasting it live on Facebook that day. So for hopefully we can have people out there. Uh, we have, as of the last time that I looked, and I will say I've not looked in the last two days, but we have two of the three flagpoles up and the lighting is going to be there. So uh, that part is on its way. So it'll be all up and set for that. Uh, and we will have, we have extended the invitation to um, uh, any of the Reynoldsburg High School graduates that will be entering the armed uh, services uh, for next, uh, after they graduate this year. Uh, so hopefully we'll have a number of them coming and joining us uh, at that location uh, to again honor our veterans. And I also believe that we'll have uh, at least State Representative Rich Brown uh, it will be joining us, but I'm not sure everyone else is kind of, uh, their calendar is floating. Uh, so we'll see who else. Uh, I know Congressman Steve Stiver's office was contacted, but he decided instead of coming, he was going to retire uh, from Congress. So I, I try not to take that personally, um, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see who else is able to potentially join us at that time. Um, other than that, there was some question. Uh, Commander Musi came in, and I, I think he was going up to see Jessica, but I thought they changed the time to eleven o'clock. I think that there was some, con uh, that, and that's why the la that's why I said it was the last that I had heard was twelve o'clock. So we'll get some confirmation on that in the next day or two. Um, I know we're waiting to. I guess you'd say advertise the event um, through the city pages and whatnot uh, until we get some confirmation on that one. So I'll, I'll redouble the efforts to make sure that we know what time. I know the people that I've talked to and I thought it had been 12 o'clock. So if we need to adjust a little bit earlier, uh, then I'm sure we can figure something out for that particular day. Okay. Are you aware of any other events that are going on that weekend? I know that the Cub Scouts typically go out to uh, Glen Rest Saturday morning uh, to put out uh, the flags on the veterans at the Glen Rest Cemetery, but I'm not sure um, if there are any other events on Memorial Day weekend. Do you know of any? The Cedar Cemetery, the Daughters of the American Revolution are always there. Um, the one that's behind, oh gosh, what's the name of that? Bippity Bop or Bebop? Bippity uh, Bop? Yes. Okay. Over on, uh, on the no, 256. That, that exactly. Particular. That one there. They lay a wreath and it's very nice. 
Um, I know Turo Township does one over by the middle school by Hannah Ashton. Um, and I've been to one that at Glen Rest that is really, really well done. And I'm not sure what the times are on that. I hopefully we're not stepping on any of those, but I would like to be able to share with the VFW the invitation and the program ahead of time. So once that's printed, I'll run it over there. Okay. All right. Um, and then after that, there's uh, some potential improvements uh, that we'll try and uh, depending on what uh, what the city is allowed to use and not use for America Recovers Act or anything like that for some of the other things that we've talked about. I know the next step is uh, the uh, either granite or sandstone um, uh, pillars that are that would line the brick walkway up into that area that uh, showcase the six branches of the U.S. military. I know that that is something that is that is out there. I've talked with our service director about getting some potential quotes on that. Uh, but again, it's as Stephen and I well know, we are attending every Zoom and reading every piece of everything on what we can and cannot use some of the stimulus money for. Um, and in this case, um, you know, improving parks is always a good thing, and I think this would be a good use of it if we are allowed. If not, uh, then we'll we'll figure something out and we'll 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 move to the next step on some things. Very good. All right. Uh, well, um, we're very efficient as always with the military commission. So we have <laughs> 15 minutes to go before our next one starts. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, call a close to this particular group. Uh, but again, if there's anybody out there that would like to join in any of our commissions, whether it's arts and beautification, welcoming and diversity, military recognition, or traffic and transportation, uh, you are more than welcome to join us at any point in time. Um, Stephen, you're more than welcome to hold on. I know Director Bauscher will be joining us at the next one to talk about the BRT. We had a very interesting meeting today with CODA about some of their plans um, to, uh, to deal with that particular thing. If not, something tells me you'll know about it soon enough. So very right. good. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Thanks. All right, we'll give it a little bit of time um, for those of you that are on uh, and watching at home or trying to figure out how much I can actually talk without really saying much of anything. Um, I'm a teacher, I can fill that some, some dead air. Uh, trying to figure out if we had some other things. We do uh, want to give a shout out to uh, Donna Bauman for joining me today on the 12 o'clock show talking about our park, specifically Civic Park. Uh, we are going to be doing a walk in Civic Park um, on uh, May 22nd uh, from one to probably one to three. Take a couple of hours in Civic Park uh, with uh, Councilwoman Shanette Strickland. Uh, we'll talk about some of the potential improvements at Civic Park uh, that people have been talking about, uh, that we've had some kind of mock-ups to do before we get too far into everything, just making sure everybody understands that some of the improvements that are out there with a the potential dog park, um, you know, some uh, Frisbee golf, uh, potential splash pad, an outdoor amphitheater that we uh, actually talked about earlier tonight on the Arts and Beautification Commission, uh, so that would be a possibility as well. Um, so a lot, of, uh, a lot of good things coming up on that one. Uh, as well as some of the rest of our activities all the way throughout. And if uh, members of the Traffic Commission will indulge me, I will say I know that uh, after the presentation at the last uh, two council meetings ago, um, we did talk about some of the things that are going to go in place on Priestley in the not too distant future, uh, as far as um, some of the crosswalks uh, and the uh, paths, uh, ADA compliant crosswalks at Windriff and uh, Corey Cliff uh, that will help to add uh, some dedicated sight lines, um, some different striping on there. Uh, we are still waiting for the stop signs uh, with their flashing uh, LED lights uh, to come in. I've gotten an update since last week, but uh, everything seems to be on back order uh, just because that's just the nature of things right now, especially with some of the uh, cost and materials uh, for some of these items that we're looking at, um, but just kind of giving you an update on that. Um, got about 12 minutes to go, so I'm trying to figure out if there's any other fun things that we can talk about. Can we get the really nice bright signs? Yes, uh, the ones that when you turn it on, it kind of looks like somebody's high, putting the high beams on into the house. I think that's uh, that awesome. Uh, so that way that, you know, just that big, bright, intense thing. So that'll be good to, I'm sure it won't make any impact whatsoever on any of the residences in there, but. All right. Nobody's commenting you, on social media. You know, um, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to Mr. Dorman. Do you know if they're going to be like steady on? 
lights no, or if they're going to no. be flashing as people approach? I, my understanding is that they're flashing as people approach, that it's not going okay. to be something that is a continuous thing. I'm not really sure which would be better in all honesty. If it was, if it was continuous, maybe you wouldn't, you know, you'd start to kind of go, you know, eye blind to it to say you won't pay as much attention to it. Or if it's, um, you know, if it only occurs when somebody's coming in, I'm pretty sure that somebody with a sense of humor somewhere says that it's, you know, the faster you're driving, the more intense the blinking, but uh, that would actually be funny, but probably not going to be technologically advantageous at that. Um, we are going to be looking at uh, putting some uh, information out on uh, the Wagner Road update. Um, we're getting ready to do some, uh, submit some uh, legislation for survey work and things of that nature out there. So that process is going to get started. Uh, and we're getting ready to meet with uh, Franklin County um, in a little bit. So I know that's not necessarily on the agenda as CODA is going to take uh, a majority of everything, um, but we'll go from there. Awkward silences. So um, now we have a few more minutes for that particular topic. I don't think there's anything else. Most everything that I have to talk about is roads related. So I'll wait until everybody's here in case anybody else is joining us on this one. All right, Director Bauscher is joining us uh, gracefully. Um, we, as we always tend to do, we get done with our military commission meeting significantly earlier than all the rest. I will uh, put that up to uh, efficiency of military standard training uh, that we get, get in, get out, and get done what we need to get done. Cool. So a few minutes before we start, uh, in case anybody else is joining us uh, for, um, for our traffic and transportation information uh, meeting. Um, I did want to comment, um, I don't know if you had seen it yet, uh, Andrew, that uh, the governor is going to be rescinding all of the uh, health orders uh, coming the first week of June. Uh, so uh, much like our council planning and BZBA meetings, uh, we will be doing our community commission meetings live here at City Hall, hopefully in about, uh, we, the next one will be on June 16th. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at for that one. Um, we're trying to figure out how we break that down. We'll probably do two commission, two committee meetings, one night to uh, the following, uh, maybe the following uh, after the second meeting of the month uh, for everything, just to kind of respect everybody's time all the way across. So have they released the Green Bay Packers schedule yet? I think they did. I haven't checked it yet, so. Is that the one with or without Aaron Rodgers playing? <laughs> uh, we were not going to talk about that. I saw an article recently that actually suggested that the uh, Bears, the Vikings, and the Detroit Lions should offer up draft picks to whichever team um, is planning to trade for um, Aaron Rodgers to get them out of the division. It's one of those things that you laugh and say, oh, that would never happen. And then you start to think about it. It might. It might. I, if I was the Bears owner, I would say, you know what, I, I traded up for Fields, he's the future, and let's go ahead and get rid of Rodgers, and then we've got no competition left. Yeah. But we have Goff and Andy Dalton. I, I, I like my odds. Uh, don't forget Kirk Cousins out in Minnesota, so. Ah, yes, Kirk Cousins. But uh, no, just interesting things. Um, yeah, I, I saw that. I, I had not seen anything else uh, specifically. Uh, I've had I've, there are a couple of memes out there that have uh, a couple of action heroes walking away from explosions and um, you know things that you know things are really cool when you walk slowly away from a destroyed uh, destroyed building. Um, you know, there's one from X Men and Avengers and things like that. And then there was a picture of Aaron Rodgers walking away from Green Bay Lambeau Field. Um, for those of you that haven't picked up on it yet, I am not a Green Bay Packers fan. I am a Chicago Bears fan, so I am 
duty bound uh, to not like the Packers, so much like Ohio State is duty bound to not like Michigan. Uh, the only difference is my team can't beat the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> yeah, for now. That's true, you know. Before Andrew was born, though, it was a different story. That's true. The 70s were a different time. And, and the 80s, but I, you, were, you, know, you weren't even born then. I was. Just barely. Yeah, exactly. Of course, we were good when it all began, too. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, Mike Ditka is on the Super Bowl trophy. No, but George Hallis is on the, the NFC Championship trophy. So <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll trade barbs about that after Aaron Rodgers retires. Um, it goes from there. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get lucky with a third, a third one. So I, I would be shocked. And it'd be great for you, but yeah, I don't think love is is uh, to the top there. He was he was going to be drafted, so if they're looking for other veteran quarterbacks to bring in during spring training, then that means they're worried. Yeah. So for those of you just joining us, welcome to Sports Talk here at Reynoldsburg City uh, City Hall. We're talking with Andrew Bauscher, uh, uh, very saddened Green Bay Packers fan, uh, bracing himself for the inevitable decline of a once proud franchise. Um, so we're going over that type of thing before we start our transportation meeting. Um, this is just another great way to fill in some air. Um, I guess I can talk a little bit about, uh, for those of you that are still watching, uh, Main Street tr uh, Construction. Um, I saw something earlier about it. Um, we did actually meet with uh, the Franklin County Sheriff's Office, who actually has jurisdiction over uh, how the traffic is flowing, uh, to work with them to kind of make a little bit easier flow uh, from the east to the west on, uh, on Main Street. We also know that uh, Columbia Gas hopefully will be finishing their work on Lancaster by the end of next week, early the week after. Uh, so that is a potential that it, uh, will help some of the uh, some of the traffic concerns in that regard before the rest of the construction on Main Street really kicks in. Uh, we have not heard yet from Franklin County on when they're going to start their part of Main Street. Um, we do know that Lincoln County is moving along pretty quick uh, on some things, but uh, still gonna be probably a, a, a good month uh, before we hear too much about that particular thing. So we got a couple minutes left and it's April Darling just joined us. I joined late, but um, maybe you might want to mention something about the Rumpke situation because like Facebook is lit up with these people asking the same questions over and over. Yep, um, that's a great question. Uh, Rumpke is experiencing a staffing shortage. Um, and so uh, amongst a number of things that they're having to deal with are uh, it's, you know, it, it's supply and demand when it comes to CDL drivers uh, during this time with the construction that's going around. Uh, it's very competitive wage-wise, um, and so some people uh, who probably have been working for uh, Rumpke are looking for other positions, and Rumpke is aggressively trying to recruit uh, new workers. Uh, they've uh, added stay-on bonuses. They've added uh, sign-on bonuses. Uh, they've also increased their starting wages, uh, so they are trying to bring a number of people in. Uh, the problem with that is uh, from the day that you're interviewed and hired, it's still going to be about four weeks to go through their training process. Uh, to make sure that everyone gets fully trained up. They've uh, it brought in other workers from different regions around central Ohio to kind of help offset for some of the uh, uh, manpower shortage that is out there. Um, it, while it may not make everybody feel good, keep in mind it is we are not the only community that is suffering. Um, similar communities, uh, stories have been told in Westerville, Gahanna, uh, and others that are Dublin uh, that, is, that are suffering from some of these delays. Uh, it just happens to be that by the time Thursday comes around, um, if Rumpke is not able to get there by, you know, the first in the morning and Thursday, it's because they're finishing up their routes in another community from Wednesday, and then uh, they'll be in Thursday uh, midday and beyond, and then coming in Friday and Saturday if needed. Uh, there are uh, priorities. Um, they are going to be focusing, obviously, on uh, the trash, specifically number one, followed by recycling, and then third uh, will be the yard waste. And while the yard waste is probably the, the most messy, just because of the fact of um, you know, if it rains in Ohio, which it tends to do every 20 minutes, it seems, uh, those bags kind of get weak and things get ripped open, uh, but they are working on a lot of those things. 
Uh, they will be giving us uh, detailed maps of areas that they have hit uh, at the end of the day on Thursday so we can make sure that what areas have been missed. Um, and so when someone calls us and they say, hey, my trash wasn't picked up and I live in wherever that location is, we can know if it was because they hadn't, didn't hit the area in general or if it was a legitimate missed house. Uh, so that's part of it. Um, but those are just a couple of things that they're doing with it. Um, our contract with Rumkey is up at the end of this year. And um, while we are part of a consortium of a number of uh, cities that uh, use Rumkey as their services, uh, believe me, this is a conversation that we'll have with Rumkey and our uh, members of our consortium uh, to try and find as many adjustments as possible to improve service all the way around. And Ken, that was an awesome segue uh, to get me to keep talking to basically the eight o'clock mark. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start off uh, with everything. Um, the new business really is uh, primarily just going to be all about Andrew right now. Andrew's going to give us a little bit of an update. And again, I want to thank him uh, for coming, uh, coming on here after hours uh, to talk a little bit about CODA and the rapid transit line. Um, I did mention earlier that we had a meeting with CODA uh, earlier today to talk about some things. Uh, so that might be something that we can do there. And from there you go. We'll go ahead and let you take it away. Thanks, Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you all for uh, having me this evening. It's always happy to talk uh, transportation and the city of Reynoldsburg. So we're going to talk a little bit about high capacity transit, um, especially with uh, CODA and the bus rapid transit plan that we are coming up with for the east west corridor. We happen to be on the east uh, section of that. Um, so just real quick, this has been an ongoing project. Uh, I serve as the technical advisory for the city. Um, and then there are other entities as well, like Columbus, Whitehall, Bexley, um, and then uh, out west as well, um, some smaller townships that are a part of that as well. Um, this is where they feel the next bus rapid transit outside of High Street will go. Um, they know that they have secured uh, West uh, um, Broad Street. But East Broad Street and East Main are the two areas where they are deliberating of where this should go. Um, does it stay on Route 40 and, and continue on Main Street or does it go up to Broad Street? Obviously, our preference is certainly Main Street. And so we're going to go uh, through some of the slides that we sort of were uh, brought to today. And I think it's really important to sort of go through some of that. So for the Reynoldsburg area, the station, so if it sticks on Broad Street, you can see the four general areas where those uh, stops will be. The white dots that you currently see on there right now are the actual CODA lines themselves. Currently, we have bus line number two and 25 that goes through the city and then 10 up at Broad Street. Um, just for anybody watching and, and obviously the commission here this evening, we actually have the highest ridership of any suburban city outside of Metro Columbus um, for, for CODA. Um, so we certainly have a, a large need. And I think it's not just about CODA utilizing as a transportation to get you sometimes into downtown, but also in and around town because we are located on Bryce and on Main Street uh, and, and Livingston. So definitely have a, a lot of options here within the city. Um, this gives you a really great overview of where they're planning. So as you can see, starting from Prairie Township along West Broad until it gets into downtown Columbus, right past Kosai, this is the preferred route, the only route that they have selected. Going east, you can see where we're talking about Broad Street or Main Street. And so I think our competitor to the west, Whitehall, wants it to be on Broad Street. That's where their new development's happening. And obviously our new development is happening on Main Street. And everything in our comp plan and our zoning code has been about transit-oriented development, making sure that it's much more walkable. And you know, as a statistic that's out there, actually 60% of all of the residents in the city of Reynoldsburg are actually within a one mile walking distance of Main Street. So there's a phrase that we use out in the planning world called first mile, last mile. And what we want to do is make sure that we have the largest section of our population, especially the most underserved section of our population is in within walking distance of this bus rapid transit so they can get to work and to jobs, especially when they don't have reliable transportation already. So it's imperative for us that we certainly want this on Main Street. So this is what it kind of looks like uh, if we were to go three different routes. And the, these are the options that they're, they are, are, are sort of talking about. Mixed traffic is the first one. Uh, this one pretty much doesn't change anything. 
basically what they'll do is, is instead of the two line going down Main Street or the 10 on Broad Street, there'll be a bus rapid transit line. It'll share the road with the existing traffic and it'll continue moving down east to west, um, interweaving with traffic. It makes it very congested. It's definitely the slowest time. We'll get into that here in a second, but that is one route that we could go. The second one would be a dedicated curb lane. This would put the bus rapid transit onto the sides um, uh, of Maine or Broad, and then we would still have the flow of traffic uh, in between, as you can see here. Uh, they would not need to weave in and out of traffic because it would be a dedicated lane and it would be next to the curb. And then finally, this is the dedicated median lane. This is the fastest route, meaning that uh, the median that we currently share now will be dedicated to bus. Uh, you can see that, that those are there. If your question is, is well, how do they get to there? Uh, they utilize crosswalks at that point. The goal is not to have a, a stop every few hundred feet, like where they currently have now. It's dedicated stops to make it as fast as possible uh, throughout the, the, the route. So talking about some travel times, um, center median lane, as I said, for both is the fastest, 26 minutes and 31 minutes. Uh, curbside lane 30, 45, mixed traffic 33 and 41. Something that I think we don't get into on this slide deck uh, that really should be known is they have not only taken a look at what it would look like for bus rapid transit, but there was early on thinking, well, could we do heavy rail? Could we do light rail? Could we do some other form of transportation that's out there? They went through all the different phases and they came up and said bus rapid transit is the best thing for us currently because dedicating space for a rail line is not only uh, you know, hundreds times more expensive, but it would be really, really hard when you start getting into the very urban pocket areas like Columbus to be able to put rail back in. Uh, unfortunately, there was a lot of rail lines in central Ohio a long time ago, and for whatever reason, we took them out. And so now we're sort of stuck where we're currently at. So we're making the best of a bad situation. Um, one of the other things to kind of hear and talk about is, is Broad Street is actually the more expensive route. Main Street is actually the least expensive. So there's some things that are going for us when it comes to that. And I don't know if you guys have talked about it in this commission meeting, um, but I know the mayor has his eyes uh, working with Turo Township, also working with a lot of the, the, the new uh, act um, to get an Opticon system. So this was actually talked about as well. Um, not every jurisdiction has this, but what basically this does is it allows uh, fire trucks, uh, other safety vehicles, potentially the bus rapid transit line, be able to buzz through lights uh, so it turns red on the opposite intersection and allows it to go green for them to be able to go through. That would increase it almost tenfold for a lot of these uh, times. And, and, and obviously, the goal is to get the ridership of a bus rapid transit up high enough to where we've got less vehicles on the road, less congestion, less accidents, and more people are utilizing public transit to get to where they need. And so those are some things that have all been sort of talked about. And they have definitely looking at a lot of pockets of, uh, of, of different areas. Um, certainly Reynoldsburg has a very large need and they've taken a look at um, other areas based on median income levels, um, based on median home values. And, and obviously the lower that is, the more likelihood that those demographics will actually use transit. So Main Street actually has a better demographic for transit than Broad Street. So another sort of feather in our cap as well. This kind of goes over some of the areas of mixed traffic curbside dedicated and median dedicated of what they're looking at. Uh, you know, talked about, you know, the site work at BRT stations, you know, uh, the minor utility relocation, it's obviously the cheaper route. It's already in existing today. Basically, they're just putting a different type of transportation on an existing network. Curbside, obviously, there's a little bit more road work improvements, strategic widening to accommodate transit and non-motorized facilities. The great thing for Reynoldsburg is, is because we were suburban nature or, or ex-urban, uh, we have a lot more right-of-way than typically a, a Bexley or even a Whitehall for that, for that matter. And so it gives us the ability to be able to do uh, a wide variety of this, whether it be curbside dedicated or median dedicated for our transportation network. So that's a really good uh, piece for us to be able to have because not everyone does have that. 
And not to mention, we definitely have a very large landscaping buffer and easement uh, and dedicated right away that we currently already have that not a lot of other jurisdictions will. Uh, so just a, you know, uh, standard minimum widths. They're just talking about vehicle drive lanes, 10 to 12 feet. This brings up a really great point about the um, $8 million project that the city is ongoing with um, that I'm sure you guys have talked about that starting this year and ending uh, fall of next year from Davidson to Graham and Wagner, which will be a full um, streetscape improvement project in our old town area. Our, our lane widths right now are 16 feet wide. Obviously, we want to get down to about 11. That's the fire department standard. And that way, we can still freely move through, uh, but also not creating a highway through our downtown area. So if we do a thing like Adora or more pedestrian access for other businesses in the downtown area, um, we're creating that pedestrian amenity, and it doesn't make it unsafe how I know it can feel sometimes when you're walking in Old Reynoldsburg. Um, this just talks about the existing right of way. Obviously, Broad Street has much more than Main Street. I don't think that is a surprise at all. There's a reason why it's called Broad Street. Um, and then just some of the summary of the changes of what would need to be hap happen. Um, and I actually go through some of this. This is actually mixed traffic in Reynoldsburg. This actually takes uh, one of the areas here at uh, Main Street and, and 18th. So this is actually a little bit further west of us. Um, another one at uh, Broad Street and Wagner, what that would eventually look like. So this is the mixed traffic, the existing already BRT station stops. One of the things that I think they are going to try to do is where our current stations exist now. If you've ever been behind the Coda bus, it obviously stops. It delays traffic on that curb lane. The goal would be that they would eventually go into the right of way, peel off to it has an actual stop. So that way, the two lanes, at least on Main Street for us, Broad Street, it's three lanes, uh, does not block that traffic. Um, so that, that's definitely a goal that, that they have currently right now. Uh, you can see this here happening um, for the dedicated curb lane in Reynoldsburg. You, one of these lanes would be next to the bus station. And, and this is just with the existing conditions. This is not them expanding the right of way at all outside of the BRT station. So for Reynoldsburg, this could be a much larger project where we wouldn't necessarily need to lose two lanes on either direction. So I just want to make that clear. This is just simply a concept. They're trying to get to the 30% submittal. Once they get to the 100% submittal, then we can go after federal dollars and actually be able to implement this within the next five years. That was a, my one thing I want to make sure everybody knew that this is not something that's going to be happening like in the next two years. It's going to be something that is uh, earmarked for a number of years outside. Uh, where you have a lot of uh, dedicated federal money and things like that. So, um, you know, we have not really had any conversations about how it may impact the finances of Reynoldsburg. Uh, but, you know, a couple of points specifically to this that I uh, want to make sure that everybody's aware of is, one, you know, access to transportation is a very huge barrier uh, for people when it comes to job access. Uh, we know that there are plenty of jobs out um, in the Edna Township region with the distribution centers. We know there are other jobs in downtown Columbus, and obviously we are trying to do our best to attract jobs to Reynoldsburg. And the idea is that a combination of all of these things, more job in Reynoldsburg for people to live in Reynoldsburg uh, will help alleviate some traffic concerns. Uh, jobs that uh, are in Edna Township or down in Columbus with this BRT would allow uh, quicker transportation to hopefully again take other cars off, uh, off the main roads. Uh, so I do appreciate uh, Andrew coming in and kind of giving a very uh, in-depth view. Uh, just kind of luck that we had this meeting uh, with, uh, with Coda earlier today. There are going to be a number of other events that are coming up, specifically uh, public town halls. Uh, one will be actually announced tomorrow as far as the date. Uh, one's in the middle of the day, one's in the evening uh, for public commentary to get some of that information, uh, suggest what you like, what you don't like, what things you would be there. Um, but uh, we'll make sure that the rest of this committee gets it as well. Um, unless there are, if there are any questions for Andrew before I go ahead and let him have the rest of the night off. I have a question for him. Um, what is the east end of this development or where, how far are we looking at? Are we looking at the East Kroger or are we looking at the um, Amazon facility? You know, how far east would Coda consider that route? Yeah, Mr. Nalp, that is a great question. In fact, it's something that the mayor and I have struggled 
not internally, but trying to pressure Coda to extend that route as far east as we possibly can. As it was shown on that map that I showed, it's it's pretty much Taylor Road is where is where it's at. So uh, Taylor and Maine, as you had mentioned, the older Kroger's, I guess, is what you would call it now. Uh, that's out there. That's the last stop. We'll have four stops within the city, uh, three, three or four, uh, at least on our section. Um, but we have tried to get them to go all the way out. I think that's why the mayor had mentioned about the distribution centers being out there, plus the new Eastwood development and the Department of Agriculture that's out there. We'd really like to see that fourth stop be all the way out there. It makes a lot of sense. It's a really good opportunity for that to be the turnaround. But I think CODA is more interested in making it more of a regional type of transportation system when it gets out into Licking County. Uh, they were saying the exact same thing when it was getting out into Madison County, out to the west as well, when you start getting into West Jeff and, and other areas like that, where they feel that maybe that's a regional transportation, that this is not sort of the end of the line, but some other planning needs to be picked up after that. As much as we have tried to pressure them to, to extend that out, uh, they feel very stern that, you know, that, that's going to be roughly the end line is around Taylor and Maine. Not for lack of trying, and we'll still continue to do so. And is that why the comparison between Broad and, and uh, Main Street is because of Taylor on both ends? I, yeah, I think part of that is the reason. I think each each road has its own um, its own advantages and disadvantages, kind of like what Andrew had gone through. Uh, one thing that I tried to make a point to them is that uh, if, if we're thinking, let, let us think more than just five years down the road, let's think 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Um, you know, if you're taking the Broad Street, the, the odds of extending through Broad Street into the Pataskala region is not going to lead you to homes, it's going to lead you to, or not going to lead you to jobs, it's going to lead you to a lot of uh, residential development, which is good in one regard, uh, but at the same time, there's not going to be as many uh, job opportunities where if you're looking at the Main Street side, uh, you get into that Aetna Township region where you have your Amazons, you have your other distribution centers like Coles, Ashley, and who knows what else is coming down the way. Um, you know, would it be possible to extend that to what we were talking about to the Department of Agriculture, and then even then partnering then at that point with Licking County and doing a smaller shuttle service from that particular area out to the rest of Edna Township. Um, Edna Township uh, is going and uh, is having their own concerns when it comes to development and the number of houses that are out there. Uh, according to Edna Township, only 6% of the employees that work at the distribution centers in Edna Township actually live in Edna Township. That means people that are working there are driving from everywhere else, including Reynoldsburg. And the odds of us uh, being able to create and extend that line to get out further there would continue to alleviate that traffic and still provide those kind of jobs for us here in Reynoldsburg and also help Edna Township out when they're dealing with some of their development issues as well. Yeah, I guess to the mayor's point, um, you know, it's not just about anymore about individuals living in the surrounding communities and, and going into downtown Columbus. I think if the pandemic, is, if pandemic has, has really taught us anything is that's not necessarily going to be the future. They want to be in more regional headquartered type areas like Reynoldsburg, Grove City, Dublin, Westerville, and then even more so when you're talking about thousands of jobs, potentially tens of thousands of jobs in Aetna and even in uh, other areas like Obets and some of the surrounding areas uh, that those individuals are coming. So it's almost like a reverse transit system that's not necessarily going in the downtown area, but now it's going all the way out into the rural areas as well. Um, I, I think the good point to take away from this is, is, is our goal is to get them to pick Main Street first and foremost. When that happens, when they get further down the line, three, four years down the line, we can continue to hound away with having them add an additional stop. And I think we're in a better position at that point to be able to do it than, than potentially right now. There was a, a where I lived um, outside of the state of Ohio, there were a number of companies like where, like the mayor just said, uh, out at the distribution center area, that a number of the companies actually would go to a place like Bryce and Maine, uh, like the Kmart Center, and actually had people park and then they would uh, take the specific bus to that uh, area and then they would run shuttle buses throughout the day. Uh, and that's what a lot of companies were doing who didn't want traffic uh, going into more congested areas. And maybe that's an alternate to add to the, to the incentive that the uh, distribution centers uh, have only a limited number of parking spaces, limited number of 
of people, and they could actually uh, invest in a, a shuttle bus service from uh, the, the Kmart Center uh, to, to collect the number of people who would be coming. Uh, just an idea. Yeah, we, uh, when I was with UPS um, out at the uh, Trebu location, we actually had a shuttle service that would go out for our late night and early morning shifts into some of the apartment complexes in the area, doing that same thing that you just referred to. They would go in, they would pick up uh, X amount of workers and bring them back in uh, because of some of those transportation concerns. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, there you go. I'm pretty sure that Amazon's got the cash uh, available to them that if they wanted to do that, they can. Um, but I think that that's, that's something definitely we have to continue in on those conversations. Yeah, so Amazon, as, is running, uh, Amazon is running that program in uh, multiple cities. So I'm not, not sure what, uh, what number of employees they need to make it an option here. I think that the biggest option really is that people have driven there. And so they haven't probably seen a, a shortfall in that, because like I said, if, if six, only 6% 6 of the workers that live in Aetna actually work in Aetna Township at those facilities, there probably has not been, um, you know, everybody else seems to be driving in and then that need hasn't gotten there yet. Now, how that pandemic or how the lack of employees in other industries uh, because of everything that's going on now, how that's impacting it, we'll be curious to see. Uh, as we wind down, um, I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware now that everybody's on um, that with the governor's orders uh, on uh, the uh, health restrictions will be uh, eliminated by the first week of June. Uh, we will be having our next meeting um, in council chambers. Uh, so that will be probably either the uh, Wednesday after the first meeting uh, of the month, which is the second week or the fourth uh, Monday or fourth Wednesday of the month after that second meeting. Uh, we'll reach out to you tomorrow uh, to uh, kind of shore up that to see if there's preferences uh, for either one. Some people would prefer one, some people would prefer the other, but I do think it would be in the uh, time, in everybody's time interest uh, to make sure that you guys can actually maximize some of your discussions, um, you know, a, a, as a full body uh, to uh, have a, a little bit more time than just the 20 minutes that we're splitting with all the other groups so far right here. Uh, I see Brett joined us. How'd you shoot? Uh, how'd you shoot today, Brett? I heard you were going to be golfing. 46. 46. Yeah. Not yeah. bad, but I didn't score any points. <laughs> but it is what it is. Maybe. I'll take a 46. It's not bad. No, not at all. Um, with that, are there any other last second questions uh, that anybody has before we go ahead and uh, sign off? One, one quick one since I came in late, and, and I know I talked to you the other day about having our uh, RCA meeting tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Do we know anything about Main Street? Nothing. So we're, we're, we're continuing to ask. We don't have any other information. I, I don't want to, I, I want to hesitate when I sit there and say, I'm hearing that they're not going to get to the Franklin County side yeah. after the July 4th. But the moment that I say that that with any certainty, <laughs> um, that's when they're going to start tearing things up the week before the parade. No, the last week of June. <laughs> yeah. So, but we'll definitely, as soon as we know, we'll, we'll keep you. I know that we have let them know that the parade route is uh, what the parade route is and when the parade is. So they know that part of it. So hopefully they will just continue working out uh, in Lincoln County. The, uh, the, the contractor that's doing our, the Franklin County side is also the same doing the Lincoln County side. So hopefully they will finish off that Lincoln County first before they move into our area. Okay. All right. Well, with that, thank you again, uh, Director Boucher, for coming in and talking about CODA this evening. Um, and if anybody has any questions in the meantime, feel free and shoot them to yeah. us. But otherwise, we will see you uh, probably either that June 16th or the June, I guess that would probably be the two weeks after that, the late June. Uh, but with that, we will go ahead and call it an evening. So thank you all for joining us today. I uh, appreciate it. And we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Okay.